Hello and welcome back to another video on this uh, series. Today we're going to be talking about Poor Folk. This is a book written by Dostoevsky and is in fact his first book that he wrote and was published, which was seen as like a literary success. It was the book which brought him to fame, got him into the circles of Belinsky and other of these um, writers and got him into those literary circles. Of course, this was the early Dostoevsky. That means it was a Dostoevsky before he was sent in to uh, Siberia or exiled. So that is kind of the background that you want when you're reading Poor Folk. So in this video, essentially what I'm going to be doing is it's not going to be too long, but I'm going to be talking about the value of this book, what you can learn from it, and also how it can help you to learn the rest of Dostoevsky's work. So first of all, like what exactly is this book and how can it help you reading Dostoevsky? Well, the, the good thing about Poor Folk is it really takes you or takes you into the life of someone who lives into, uh, who lived in Russia before um, the Soviets came. It, it, it kind of gives you the idea that the situation which we saw was not always like a Soviet came in it was, and then everything got better. It was kind of the idea that both during the Soviets and before the Soviets, the situation wasn't the most beautiful thing ever. Of course, there was the aristocrats, there were uh, the those people in the high courts who actually did have the landlords who actually did have a lot of money. However, at the same time, there are the peasantry, which makes up a significant percentage of the Russian population who actually suffered a lot. This is a, basically a, a tale of those who suffer and those who struggle. And we can understand and realize the struggle by looking at it from the perspective of uh, the notes that uh, Dostoevsky had. And, and this is uh, uh, le letters of Fyodor Mikhailovich uh, uh, Dostoevsky, where he writes to uh, different people about his time, and there's like a collection of his notes from uh, before he started writing Poor Folk to almost the end of his life. So what we see here is that if we if we zoom in on that section of life before he kind of uh, started writing Poor Folk, we realize that Dostoevsky himself was in a deep financial problem. He couldn't pay for the basics like tea. He couldn't pay for the basics like. Um, that he needed in the army, and as a result, the first, the first, um, the first letter that he does, which is to his father, is about asking for uh, those those needs, or at least some financial support to these things, and and that continues on throughout the early years of Dostoevsky's life in the army, and also uh, before publishing *Poor Folk*, where he struggles to get or make ends meet because he doesn't have enough food, doesn't have enough uh, resources to really pay for everything that he needs, and as a result. This poor folk is really a representation of that initial kind of poverty that Dostoevsky had, which does indeed um, does indeed tie into the rest of his life, but it is specifically emphasized here. And we also should keep in mind when we were reading Poor Folk that that this was a book which got him in into a discussion with Belinsky, who was a great liberal kind of socialist uh, writer who or or a famous uh, socialist writer in the literary circles, which did ultimately lead Dostoevsky to be. Um, exiled or sent to Siberia for kind of the rebellion, joining this rebellious um, leftist or uh, rebellious kind of liberal group, which was going against the Tsar. So as a result, we can also see there's another of this kind of dynamic, which is this, the suffering in this book is most likely to be seen to represent that kind of the socialist uh, critique or the socialist argument of the, of the oppression of the masses and brings it out in a very realistic manner. And, and what you do learn from this is that you don't necessarily need to be a socialist or you don't necessarily need to be those left, extreme left kind of liberals who, to, in order for you to understand the realistic nature of suffering. And of course, Dostoevsky does join that group. And as a result, you can say, well, this might be a representation of those thoughts as well. But there's also the other idea, the other reading of Dostoevsky, that while he did join them because those things were initially sounded very good, he never actually fundamentally agreed with the core of the socialist or liberal message because if you look at what he does talk about instead, if you talk, if you look at, if you look at the, his later works and how he was kind of how he was disillusioned with that movement after he was sent to uh, the prisons, we can see that well maybe this poor folk is not really helping that narrative, but just to represent the real nature of the suffering. But through that suffering, reach greater profundity. And I think that is part of the what he says in The Idiot when he says beauty will save the world. It's like there is suffering in this world. There is great torment and struggle. But through that struggle, you can find beauty. And, and it's that redemptive nature through the struggle which you find beauty. And I think that is at the cornerstone of Dostoevsky's work when he's writing Poor Folk. And, and while he might be flirting with those socialist ideas, 
at the same time, that is not what fully incorporates or that's not what fully defines his belief in Porfoot. That is part of what he's writing, but ultimately he's not writing this as a socialist work, but just as an accurate dis a depiction of life in um, Soviet Russia. And, that, and also reading this allows you to kind of like, kind of understand the genre more of historical fiction, which which is which is the tr the same theme which you find I think throughout Dostoevsky's works. While it is indeed fiction, they're set in very real situations. A gambler is set in a very real situation. Demons is set in a very real situation. All of these books that Dostoevsky writes, although are fiction, the characters don't necessarily exist directly. Are indeed representations of um, reality, or they're a representation of the history that Dostoevsky knew so intimately, and are reflections of what could, or warnings of the future that he predicts. And and I think that is the beauty of Dostoevsky, because I think by reading Porfurt, you are introduced to that style of Dostoevsky's writings, and also how realistic he is, and how unafraid he is to depict the real horrors of the human nature. So that's kind of why I think you should read Poor Folk. If you want to psychoanalyze it, I would have to admit that this is perhaps not the most psychologically profound kind of book that you want to read of Dostoevsky. And it also isn't one of the most profound short works that Dostoevsky writes. If you really want a, a psychological kind of discussion, then read A Gentle Creature or read uh, The Dreams of a Ridiculous Man or a Happy Man, no matter, uh, depending on the translation. So go read those other short books or The Gambler as well. I made a video about that previously. But if you want to have a more psychological kind of introduction into Dostoevsky, you might want to go with those other books. However, if you want to read the book, uh, a book about kind of the genre, the historical style, getting to know the poverty, the suffering of the early Dostoevsky, and which does indeed follow through the rest of his life, then make sure to read Poor Folk. So this is essentially why you should read Poor Folk. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure to like and subscribe. Every week I make uh, a discussion about the Bible and make a discussion about a Dostoevsky or Nietzsche and the existentialist movement. And I also make a video about a response video or a reaction video. So if you're interested in that, make sure that you stay tuned on this channel, like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon and goodbye.